today we're adding four new fish to my most expensive aquarium I own. These fish have been waiting months to be added to their new home and now it is finally time to do so. However, we had some major issues and unfortunately, one of them didn't make it. You're probably also wondering why did I take so long and why haven't I added these fish from the beginning, especially if one didn't do well. Now the tank that's getting the new fish and my most expensive and costly tank I own is this one right behind me. This is my discus tank, a 90 gallon aquarium where I have a bunch of discus plants and I recently just added these little tetras or fish right here called cardinal tetras. I also added some catfish, these little Cory stir-by catfish over here. And this tank is doing well. And the fish we're gonna be adding are actually down here. These are four new discus that I've got for a while and I put them in here to make sure they were all healthy. If you didn't know, anytime you get new fish, best practices are to isolate that fish so you can make sure that they're all good and healthy before you add them to your main display or aquarium. This helps prevent any diseases or illnesses getting into that tank that you love so much. Also, just making sure that the fish is good before you put them in a tank with a bunch of other fish that may pick on them or cause them issues. Discus, like the ones up here, are cichlids and can be quite aggressive to new fish, so it's always best to add them in groups, which is also another reason why I waited so long. However, this guy did not make it. He was part of the original discus in this group, but he was never eating and not taking to new foods. I had tried numerous different types of foods for him to eat with the rest of them, but he only wanted one type of food. And that food is bloodworms. And that food is not necessarily healthy for the fish long term. And so it's best to get them on something more sustainable like pellets or other frozen foods. However, he was just not taking to it. And when he did, he would not eat much of the frozen foods even when I did feed him bloodworms. And after months and months of treatment in these quarantine tanks, he unfortunately passed. And I'm not happy, of course, and like it makes me really sad because I really, really liked him and wanted him to do well. But we did the best that we could by using medications, isolating him, soaking food in garlic, a bunch of different things. But I think he just got bullied by the other fish, for one, which happens in cichlid tanks quite often, where the weakest fish will just get picked on and picked on and is harder to eat. The goal was to get him off bloodworms and he just would not take to it and then he just stopped eating altogether. It's, a, it's part of the natural process where the weakest fish will not survive and in the wild discus are with piranhas and a bunch of other fish and they gotta fend for themselves. Even these discus, like this guy back here, this little brown one, He's actually quite beautiful with red and blue spots, but he's colored down because he's not the most dominant fish in the tank. When a fish is the least dominant, especially in cichlids, they tend to just get pushed, grow the slowest because they get the least amount of food, but it's just natural. So for example, this guy's the biggest guy because he is one of the most dominant ones in the tank and pushes all the other guys out with food. But regardless, we're still gonna be adding four beautiful new fish into this tank. They're already eating healthily and are happy. I wanted to make sure I had a group of them so that one fish couldn't get picked off. So the four new guys were actually two of which I saved, you know, quote unquote, from the fish store. These two blue guys, they weren't doing well when I originally bought them and I made a video about that where they were all colored down. I medicated them, got them. Food. Now they're doing well and are fat and are eating really, really well. So it's time to add them to the new tank. I also have this little yellow pigeon blood who was not eating because this is his brother up here, but he wasn't eating well. So I put him in here with this white little guy and now they started eating and are doing well too. One of the biggest challenges when getting discus is getting them to eat, especially food that you have. Discus I've like are super moody fish. Sometimes they'll go on hunger strikes where they don't eat for weeks, right? Being added to a new tank. Or they'll go months without eating. I've had that happen where the fish finally started eating, but unfortunately appeared to be blind and just never could get the food well compared to all the other discus and he ended up passing as well. So it's extremely important that you know where your discus come from, make sure they're good quality, make sure they're eating well. Before we add the new discus from down here to up here, I want to test the water. These are recently just added like 15 to 20 little tetras and 10 to 15 little catfish as I showed you. And we just wanna make sure there's not any too big of spikes or issues with the water quality. So over here we got our test strips. We're just gonna take our test strip, stick it in the tank, wiggle it a bit and if the water is all good then we're all good to get these discus out of their quarantine tank which if you don't know this is a 10 gallon tank 
and they've been in there a bit and they probably would love a 90 gallon very spacious aquarium in comparison so i'm excited i'm happy that they're doing well and they will give them so much more room as you can imagine these bigger guys push around the babies up here the babies will have much better time of getting their own food and not being picked on by these two like the little white guy back there definitely at the bottom of the pecking order so this will help them so if we can really spread that aggression out with a lot more discus they're gonna do so much better. So what makes this tank so expensive is the fish themselves. Discus are one of the most expensive freshwater fish and considered like the king of the freshwater world because of their beautiful colors, their amazing personality and shape, but it's mainly like their ability to look like a saltwater fish when they're only freshwater fish. And I say that lightly because like clearly these little tetras are amazing and compete with saltwater fish in terms of beauty. And like, look at this guy, like he's just stunning. So for example, like one of these discus now at this size in my area, like this big blue guy might cost nearly $200 or more, you know, for this size, maybe 170. I, it's hard to tell because the prices change all the time, but that's just an example of one fish. A small discus is roughly like this big for like 60 to $80, $90, depending on the species and the color patterns. So you can imagine when they get bigger, they like double in price easily. They go crazy expensive. The other thing that makes discus quite expensive and so prized in the freshwater hobby is they're quite hard to keep in comparison to any other freshwater fish. It's time to check out the test strip to see how well they're doing. So the way with the little test strip, you just take this and you measure it. And I'm so used to all this information. The thing we're not really concerned about is nitrates because that should be in an aquarium. You know, there's tend to be some normally, but nitrites is the big issue and ammonia, but this isn't test for ammonia. But if you have good bacteria and stuff, you should never really have nitrites or ammonia. And we're looking good. Which means we can add the discus to their new aquarium and get them all set up. Now the little yellow discus will feed and nourish the garden we have around the pond. So what I'm gonna do is actually catch these discus out into a little container so I can put them in the tank. We don't have to acclimate them because the water is the same. So I'm not gonna feed them now, but I'll try to feed them after we add the new guys. All right, I got the first two fish and discus in here. You can see how beautiful they are. I did realize that the water is actually a bit warmer. So we are going to acclimate them a little bit by just pouring some water into this container first. All right, got another discus right here. You can see how beautiful he is. He's going in here, a little guy. You're only in here for like 10 minutes, 15 minutes max, and then you guys will go into your big new home. But you can see how beautiful and big he is. All right, I just added a bit more water. Gonna give them like five, 10 minutes to get used to this warmer water, acclimate them a very little bit. They're like only off by a couple degrees, but Want to minimize stress, but also not keep them in here too long. So finally, time to add these guys into their new home. They're definitely stressed a bit. I'm just going to pour them in. So they'll do well, and then I'll follow up. So let's go, little guys. Oh, look how beautiful they are. I'm just going to actually put it into the water, and I'm not too worried about the water. I'm just going to pour you guys in. Go, little guy. And they're going to take some adjustment. Again, discus are super moody sometimes. So anytime you move them or at all, they just get stressed out. You can see he's all colored up a bit weird. He looks so much better in this tank. Before he did not look this pretty, you couldn't see any of his blue. This is the other little guy, he's doing okay. And see, I added them already into the tank and you can't really tell and then neither can the other discus. They don't really know what happened and that's what I wanted. If I added just one, they probably would have picked on him and chased him to a corner really fast. But the discus are gonna adjust a bit with their hierarchy, figure out who's the boss again, and that's okay. Look at them, look at them. Wow, wow, this is such like a different blue compared to these guys. It's almost like a like sea metallic green shiny color. Him, I didn't think he was as blue. I thought he was like really faded out. But he, I thought he looked more like that guy, but he's not at all. He's like his own unique color pattern. You can see they're staying together. The little white one, this little guy's over here, a little stressed, he's gonna do okay. His brother, or twin, is over here. 
you can see his pattern is much different than his and they're like the same type. I mean, the little white guy has a little fin clamped normal. He'll come into his own. He is like the smallest one at the moment, but he will adjust and hopefully get bigger soon because he was one of the ones not eating too well for a bit and then he figured it out. Look at him, he's like such a stud. Like his whole body is shiny. Well, theirs is like their fins are like this deeper blue. You can see the new ones are definitely trying to figure out and establish their dominance. So he was like chasing this little guy. But once that's done, it's all normal when you get new discus. Even when you keep cichlids for a bit, they do it on a daily basis. Again, I don't want to feed them right now. They'll just get more aggressive, but in like 30 minutes, an hour, maybe we'll try. If you're enjoying the video, make sure to subscribe and like down below. I'd greatly appreciate it. It's been a few hours, so let's go ahead and try feeding the discus tank. But let's go ahead and get our food. So the two big ones are definitely out and more comfortable while the little ones are hiding behind the filter and stuff and behind the plants which is normal because they're just small and get picked on easily. But once the rest of the fish realize that they're not a threat, then the smaller fish tend to be able to come out like this guy. He's the smallest one, but he's comfortable in the tank. It's just right now he's been chasing them. And when they're all comfortable, then they'll be good. Let's go ahead and pour this in. Let's do a couple of scoops. And you guys are definitely a little bit more hesitant, but this guy's already going to eat, which is a good sign. He's new, his eyes are a little bit cloudy. The little white guy's poking his head out. He knows there's food in the water. The little yellow guy's all the way up there, but he'll come out eventually, you know, when he gets hungry enough and feels comfortable. All the discus are eating, you can see them. The cardinals are also eating, but everybody's looking pretty good. Definitely a lot of stress in the tank. A lot of new fish added this week, so everybody's settling down. That's why the quarries when they get added to a new tank, they tend to go crazy like that. But this guy's already eating, which I figured he was the one eating the most in the 10 gallon. This guy is really slow to eat most of the time. The little white guy, he's coming out more. I really want to see this guy grow up and look beautiful because he's such a unique color compared to the rest of the discus. It's kind of cool how they're all like grazing together in like a herd almost or a school of fish just pecking together. I think they feel really safe doing this. All right, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to watch this one right here because I know you'll love it. Thank you and have a great day. You're doing amazing. See you in the next one.